In this torrid summer of 1919, the sensational encounter between the landscape of Ticino and the poet who hailed from the north takes place. Hessa roams around the villages in the forests of chestnut trees. It was the time when, to quote Klingzor, a thousand undrunk glasses were spilled, a thousand unseen loving looks shattered, a thousand irrecoverable images extinguished. It was a time of artistic enlightenment, of intuition and metamorphosis. Color makes an impetuous entry into Hesse's life and simultaneously the urge to paint. Suddenly, at the age of 40, I began to paint. Not that I considered myself a painter or intended to become one, but painting is marvelous. It makes one happier and more patient. Afterwards, one does not have black fingers as with writing, but red and blue ones. At this painting, too, many of my friends have taken offense. I don't have much luck that way. Whenever I undertake something very necessary, auspicious and beautiful, people become cross. They would like one to stay as he is. They don't want one's face to change. But my face will not conform. It insists on changing often. That's a necessity. Another reproach thrown at me seems to me fully justified. People say that I have no sense of reality. The poems I write as well as the little pictures I paint do not correspond with reality. I admit that my own life frequently appears to me exactly like a legend. I often see and feel the outer world connected and in harmony with my inner world in a way that I can only call magical. Vater had ja in der Zeit nach dem Ersten Weltkrieg zu malen begonnen und für ihn war das sehr wichtig. In, ich kann es nicht wörtlich sagen, aber er sagte ja verschiedene Male und hat es in Briefen ausgedrückt. Das hätte ihm eigentlich geholfen, überhaupt die schwere Zeit zu überleben, was er gemalt hat. Und ich wurde selber auch Maler, weil ich bei meinem Onkel Amiet war damals. Und so in der Zeit von 1920 bis 1931 habe ich den Vater jedes Jahr mindestens einmal besucht in Montagnola. Und da gingen wir sehr oft miteinander malen, manchmal den ganzen Tag über. Eine Reise ins Engadin hat mein Vater einige Skizzen gemacht. Ich habe dieses Buch übernommen. Und dann ist er vom Engadin aus ins Tessin gefahren. Und im Tessin, das weiß ich wieder aus einem Brief, hat es dauernd geregnet, tagelang, und er hat also hier begonnen mit Selbstporträt. Hat sich gemalt, Hut, Mantel, Stock, Schuhe, wiederum ein Selbstporträt, noch eines, eines wieder so, ziemlich ähnlich, Beim Malen hat er eigentlich nie gesprochen und, und so da war er ganz einfach auf seine Arbeit konzentriert. Und ich erinnere mich gut, also mehrmals natürlich war, war zum Beispiel war gerade die Schule aus, die Schulkinder kamen heim und natürlich war sofort eine Schar Kinder drumherum und haben dazu geschaut und so und das hat Vater immer sehr gestört und das hat das. Hesse fluctuated between the need for solitude and the urge to communicate. Between episodes of warmth and moments of dejection. Between merrymaking and visions of death. 
He makes friends with Emmy Hennings and her companion Hugo Ball, whose biography will unveil the writer to himself. He also meets Ruth Wenger, the young woman who will become his second wife. However, love and friendship cannot save the writer from another period of depression. For the last year and a half, I've been living like a snail. I have produced nothing aside from the first part of Siddhartha and have begun the second, but left it unfinished. How gladly I would work. Yet, I can't manage it. The slightest task is beyond me. The typewriter remains untouched until Hesse confronts his problems through a probing analysis with Carl Gustav Jung. Siddhartha, like Hesse himself, and like most of the characters in his books, is a seeker, one who is not satisfied with the superficial, but who wants to understand who he is and the meaning of his relationship to the world. Siddhartha strives to live his life to the full. He passes from one experience to the next, does not settle with any teacher and does not consider any acquisition as final as he pursues his quest for wholeness. Finally, Siddhartha learns to remain motionless and to listen to the river of life. The whole universe surrenders to a quiet mind. The unity I venerate above multiplicity is not a boring, grey unity of a cerebral, theoretical kind. It is life itself, full of joy, full of pain and of laughter. An illustration of it may be found in the dance of the god Shiva, a dance which destroys the world. Unity is yours whenever, regardless of time, space, knowledge or ignorance, you abandon conventions and decide to belong with love and devotion to all divinities, to all of humanity, to all kind of world. Dear friends, I shall not leave this place. I'll neither go back to Munich nor to Berlin. For the wind of history and fate blows also here in Montagnola. In the 30s and up to the end of the Second World War, Montagnola and Hesse's Red House are a stopping place for countless anti-fascist scholars who have been forced to leave Germany for political and racial reasons. The first of them is Heinrich Wiegand, editor of the workers' cultural magazine Kulturweile. Then comes Bertolt Brecht, Kurt Kleiber, and Bernhard von Brentano, the writer Stefan Schweig. And Peter Weiss, who like many others also benefits from Hesse's financial support. In his letters and diaries, Thomas Mann mentions the importance of his conversations with Hesse in his new state of exile. As for Hesse, he has already foreseen at the beginning of the 20s the turn of events and politics in Germany. And takes a very clear stand against rising national socialism. During the war, as usual, Hesse is caught between two lines of fire. He is attacked by the anti-Nazis, as well as by the Nazis themselves. Emigrants think it unacceptable that he continues to publish in the Third Reich. Other Germans are furious at the way in which the literary critic Hesse is involved with exiled authors, even Jewish ones, while saving his ironical and sobering comments for the rhetoric of the blood of the fatherland, so greatly celebrated in the Third Reich. During the Third Reich, one man pays dearly for Hesse, who by now has been living in voluntary exile in Montagnola for 20 years. A 
Accused of having published books that are considered misleading by the Nazis, the publisher Peter Surkamp is sent to a concentration camp where he is beaten so brutally that he dies a few years after the war. At the end of the war, Hesse is one of the few German literary personalities to have retained his integrity. Steppenwolf, Narcissus and Goldman, and Journey to the East have enhanced his role as a spiritual guide. The writer's fame also has consequences in his private life. These pictures, taken by his friend Arthur Stoll, show Hesse in excellent health and free for once from the burden of ever-increasing correspondence. During his life, he personally answered 35,000 letters. A game of bowls in one of his beloved grottos at a local inn is a rare moment of relaxation. When the flow of curious visitors who want to see the guru of Montagnola becomes unbearable, a preemptory sign is put up on the gate to Hesse's house. <laughs> Diese Anschrift auf dem Haus, bitte keine Besuche, das hat ihm der Böhmer hingemalt beim Gartentor. Und da hat Vater auch oft gesagt, ja, das ist eigentlich schade. Da bekam er einmal einen Brief von seinem Freund Georg Reinhardt in Winterthur. Und der Reinhardt macht eine Zeichnung oben auf dem Briefkopf mit dem Gartentor und dieser Schrift dran, bitte keine Besuche. Und, und schreibt dem Vater so, ja, er hätte ihn eigentlich besuchen wollen, aber ja, er hat dann doch bleiben lassen. Und, und so sagt der Vater ganz traurig zu mir, schau, sind immer die, sind immer die falschen Leute, die das beherzigen und, und immer die, 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 die es eigentlich angeht, die... Beachten Sie nicht und kommen eben gleich wohl rein. Er wurde immer gestört, oder? Ja, 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 es kamen oft auch Besucher rein, die, die nicht gerade ins Haus kamen. Oder wenn sie schon bei der Haustür läuteten, wurden sie von Nino oder von der Sanna einfach wieder weggeschickt. Aber dann gingen sie so ums Haus rum und spazierten im Garten rum. Und wenn Vater so einen Saal gab, wurde er jedes Mal wütend. Einmal habe ich es erlebt, wie er selber dann zur Tür hinausging und den Mann also wirklich mit groben Worten hinausgeschmissen hat. Every day I get a bundle of letters between one and five hundred pages, the mere reading of which would tire a man much younger than myself. An endless flow of petitions and problems crowd my room, my eyes, my head and my heart and show me a suffering, disoriented, yet also stupid and vulgar humanity. <laughs> 